I'm going to show you the view from four different camera mounts. They're easy, inexpensive to make. Then I'll go into detail on how to make this selfie stick camera mount on my left wing. Here you can see the attach point for this selfie stick is barely visible. The easiest one of all is this wheel pan mount. Gives you kind of a different perspective. Using a little strip of aluminum, this wing mount attaches in four places. You can see that next camera mount on the tail. I have to say, having a camera mount on the tail is almost as much fun as having a selfie stick out on the left wing there. This is an amazing place to come. I came down here just the other day on my 185. I've got a selfie stick on it too. I'll post the video in just a few days. Hi, welcome to me and Joe's hangar. I'm Chris. I'm going to show you some camera mounts that are easy to make. I used them on my rocket. Let's take a look. This is the first one. It's a selfie stick mounted on my left wing. That's the one I'm going to talk about mostly today. But before we get started, let's take a look at just a couple other camera mounts. I've got this one uh, on my right wheel pant. A uh, wingtip mount, and uh, one back here on my tail. Everybody calls it a stinger, so pretty easy to make. Gives you some cool looking videos. I've got some of these mounts on my 185 also. Let's get started on this uh, selfie stick over here. Well, if you put one of these on your plane, you'll have to figure out something to make sure you don't keep running into the pole and bending it. That's why I put these cones here. Building this selfie stick, basically there's a four steps. The first thing, you need to decide on what to use for a pole or a selfie stick. Then you need to figure out a way to attach your camera to that pole. And then your selfie stick has to have some kind of a platform to clamp to. And then that platform has to be attached to the plane. The way I did is I use 10 uh, L-shaped brackets and attach it using the screws that hold my wingtip on. Well, to build the brackets, I had a bunch of these little strips of aluminum cut up. They're one inch wide and I believe this was 3 seconds that I used. The only thing I'll say about making the brackets, uh, it'd be nice if you have a, a break, but uh, I just used a vise and a couple blocks of wood. You want to put a, 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 a nice radius on it and uh, if, you, if you bend it too sharp like this, here you can see it, uh, it stretches the metal on the outside of your, your bend and in fact you can run your fingernail across it and you can actually feel where it's, it's tearing apart there. So, so don't bend it so tight that you weaken the metal, just put a nice radius on it. These are actually 8 inch pieces, I used them on a different plane. So the first step after uh, getting all your brackets made, and I used 10 because uh, I have to say the whole time I was doing this, my greatest concern and yours too would be making sure nothing falls off your plane. I kept thinking in the back of my mind, you know, that saying it's all fun and games until somebody gets hurt. And I thought of all the different ways something could go wrong. So what I did is I uh, got these brackets and I attached them to the wing here. Uh, I actually, I used different screws than the ones I pulled out. About an eighth inch longer is what I used. If I were to do it again, I'd probably turn the brackets out this way. It's a little cleaner look than having them like so. Then uh, before you attach them to your, uh, your wing, you'll want to put some kind of a pad in there. Uh, bicycle inner tube works good. Airplane inner tube's a little bit on the thick side. I ended up using this uh, this pink stuff here. It's uh, well, I, I found it in the kitchen. I, I think it's for setting hot dishes on, but my wife doesn't watch my videos. So I also you'll notice up here I, I put five of them right up here in the front because I figured that's where most of the stress is since this pole is out in front of the wing, and then uh, a couple in the center and three in the back. Then uh, I actually went and flew the plane a couple of flights like that. 
I didn't think there'd be any effect and sure enough there wasn't but I, I wanted to fly it with those on there just by themselves also make these brackets just a little bit longer you can always cut them off later on the next step I, I used a piece of aluminum angle I'm not sure if you can see it from this side let me go over here I used uh, a four foot piece of aluminum angle and that is an eighth inch thick I uh, I held it up to my brackets and then I, I clamped it on in the front and I, I clamped it back in the back and I, I stood back and I adjusted it kind of back and forth trying to get the angle I wanted as a matter of fact I actually clamped in uh, my pull at the same time to get a good idea of what what angle I was looking at once you're happy uh, mark it and then uh, and then drill through, drill through your uh, piece of aluminum angle through your L brackets. I use number eight screws with locking nuts on the back. I also uh, countersunk the screws on the side that your selfie stick is on so it wouldn't interfere with mounting your pole. And then I, I went and flew it like that to see if there was any effect. I couldn't tell. I didn't know any difference, uh, notice any difference in the way it flew. Everybody uh, asked me what it was for, and uh, people kept asking me if that was a missile rail. But it makes a nice platform for clamping uh, your selfie stick. So the next thing is deciding what to use as a selfie stick. I ended up using a, uh, a piece of half-inch electrical conduit from Home Depot. And there's a couple reasons. Uh, I, I looked at aluminum. Aluminum was, uh, I thought, just a little bit too soft and... In the beginning, I was just experimenting, and I thought it was too expensive for just experimenting. So, I uh, I, I ruled out the aluminum. I looked at uh, these carbon fiber poles that you use to attach a microphone, and uh, when you're doing videos, um, I found some nice ones around eighty dollars. They were telescoping. They already had a, a way to mount your camera on the end. But my biggest concern was I didn't want anything that could maybe snap or break off. That might be unfounded, but again, I, I was worried about stuff falling off my plane. I figured the liability would just never end if, uh, if some kind of accident like that happened. So uh, I have settled on this. Uh, you can buy a 10-foot section of this half-inch electrical conduit over at Home Depot. Pick out a straight piece. It's stiff. It's fairly lightweight for what it is and it's cheap. Well, congratulations if you've made it this far. Your final step is to attach a camera to the end of this pole. To do that, I use a quarter by 20 threaded bolt. That's the same size bolt as most of your camera tripods use. The whole trick is to epoxy it in the end of this pole and make sure that it's straight. Probably not a big deal if you're using a non-360 camera, but if you're using a 360 camera and the camera is not straight in a line with the pole, then the, the pole may show up in your video. So uh, there's a couple ways that I've used to make sure that the, it helps me keep that bolt completely uh, straight in there. And one is to, and I can't get this washer off. One was I, the first time I was lucky enough to find some washers in my toolbox that were exactly the diameter, inside diameter of this uh, tubing and I just mounted them on a bolt, slid them in there and epoxy it. That uh, kept the bolt exactly straight. Another time I, uh, I cut up some, I think it was 3 16 inch doweling. I cut about three pieces of that, about two and a half, three inches long and slid them in on the side of the bolt and that held it straight while the epoxy was drying. By the way, I, I use JB Weld now. I used some other stuff early on, but JB Weld's the easiest stuff to use now. The last way I did it here uh, just recently is I, I found the smallest hole saw I could in my toolbox and I drilled a, a core out of a 2x4, put a quarter by 20 bolt in there and, and that I chucked it up in my drill press and used my drill press like it was a lathe. Just be careful if you haven't turned any material before on a lathe because you can get hurt. Make sure you have a good tool rest and a sharp chisel and just take your time. Once I get it turned down to pretty close to the size I need, I just use a sanding block and get it done the rest of the way. Then when you're done, you end up with something like this. 
So before you laminate in the, in the end of your tube, uh, take some sandpaper or a rat tail file or something like that, stick it down there, roughen it up so the epoxy will stick. Then uh, put some JB Weld in there, put a little bit on this. It's gonna be messy. Slide it in. I push it all the way down there until I think that's about the right amount of thread showing. Fill that up with some uh, JB Weld. Then I take a piece of scrap aluminum with a quarter inch hole in it, put it over the end. Finger tighten a nut down on it just to hold it in place. Then turn it upside down. Go set it up against the wall, let it dry that way. That keeps the epoxy down here so it'll grip hold that piece of aluminum on the end. Once it cures, then I take my angle grinder and trim off the excess aluminum. And then I use a hand file and polish it off like this. Gives it a nice finished look though. So uh, when you're trying to determine how much thread to leave showing, don't worry too much. Yeah, error a little bit on the side of too much versus too little because you can always take one or two washers and shim it. In fact, I use one right there. Then I use this rubber grommet because it's nice and squishy, but you can also take a computer mouse pad and cut it up make some little washers like this, punch a hole in the center. The reason I do that is because when you're tightening your camera down, it tightens up on there nice and slow and uh, against that rubber, and that rubber kind of grips the camera and holds it in just the position you want and keeps it from backing off, losing your camera. So you can set it just like that and it'll stay there. So if you don't use these cameras, uh, I like to use the Insta. It's nice and streamlined and it looks kind of cool. But if you use a GoPro style, just get a GoPro, uh, I think it's a GoPro tripod adapter. Looks like that. You can screw that on and then attach your GoPro. Thing I also I like about these is uh, they're fairly new cameras, so the technology is the newer technology. So that stabilization is great. After all, it does sit out here and bounce around quite a bit. You'll want a camera with good stabilization and the stitching between the two lenses is great. Anyway, hopefully that gives you some ideas. You can probably take them and improve on them and uh, just be careful. Make sure nothing falls off your airplane.